Hey Modeler's Engineer, Jeff here and uh, we're about to make a swamp base. Got a couple different sizes bases here. This is the uh, Privateer Press medium size. I think this is a uh, 30 mil maybe. A little bigger, 40 mil, 20 mil. Huge, gigantic size. Anyway, we're going to um, make some swamp bases out of these. So if you're going with uh, one of the privateer press the bases that have the lip on them, uh, you're going to want to fill that in. And all I do is just take a piece of um, tape and um, I just cover it up like so. you don't have anything so the area that we're um, like for, if we're going to use this type of base um, obviously the lip is going to keep the the liquid in and we're going to use a couple different things but the first thing we'll use um, is the uh, Vallejo still water what I'm doing to just strengthen that tape make sure it doesn't like uh, nothing leaks out of there. I'm going to take a little bit of this Zappa Gap, this cryoacrylate glue, um, and uh, I'm kind of spread it around on the tape itself. Just kind of harden it up a little bit. You could use regular glue, but this just makes it harder and I'll take my my zip kicker or my accelerant and I'll just touch it in a couple places there and then you can see it just kind of spreads It'll cause that to harden really quick just be careful make sure you're doing this in a ventilated area because that stuff stinks and the fumes probably aren't that great for you. So we'll set that one aside. Alright, so we've got some Elmer's school glue. And what we're going to do is we're going to go around the rim here. And maybe we'll put some pieces, parts, chunks of something in there as well. Oh, there it is. So I'm going to rip a couple pieces of cork off of there. So once you've got the rim there, you're going to take your ballast material, which for me, it's this stuff here. And actually, I think what I'm going to do is I will put some more glue mixture. So it's going to look a little like that. And then we're just going to unceremoniously dump it in the tank and spread some stuff on top of it, the ballast. Just cover it good. 
and we're gonna let that soak for a bit and we'll see how that turns out okay so after uh, the sand and the glue dries that mixture you get something a little like this now you don't have to make a lip but I'm making a lip because um, I want to you know basically have something so the material that we're using to make the water effect um, has a place to pull up uh, here's the bigger base this is I think I want to put my uh, my turbogon or maybe my exocrine on this one but uh, everything dries nice and hard so if you watched the um, the how to make a custom base tutorial same type of thing just a uh, ample amount of cork ballast and glue and then there's a base and here's a little 20 mil you don't have to cork them up but there's your privateer press lipped base So what we'll do is take some of our Steinal Res primer and we'll prime them up black. And then we'll start the painting process. Okay, so we've got our black primer down and um, we're going to allow this to dry. Um, and when we come back, we'll go ahead and paint the rocks up and the, the, the sand and everything and just kind of kind of get it ready for the water effects okay so at this point um, I went through and uh, customized each base um, colored it up accordingly um, basically turned it into you know a little mini display piece um, there's some more things we could do to it but I'm kind of happy with the way it looks right now so we're just gonna stick with that and what I've done I don't know if the camera is gonna pick this up or not but I've taken some um, Vallejo model air green and I've painted this area here where we're gonna put the water effects and then I took um, a little darker like a like a blue color and added it to it and then painted it in the middle so it kind of simulate a little darker water and I let it dry I'm just grabbing an old brush actually get one that's got a little bitter tip on it and we're just going to go in paint this area try not to get any of it on your uh, the parts that you painted where it's land uh, does that make sense pile of shame I'm just going in and painting this area where we're going to put the water effects down and you know if you get a little bit on the land the area that you've built up don't sweat it so what I'm going to do I'll bring this over here is I'll take just a little bit of that put it over here we want to we want to darken that up a little bit using the similar colors and so what I'll do is maybe I want this area here in the middle where there's going to be a little darker area right there a little more color so it's a little deeper right there and hopefully you can see this
You just make it a little darker spot in the middle. And I'll kind of go over this one again so you can kind of see what I did. Just a little darker there in the middle because maybe the water's deeper. And uh, murkier than normal. I don't know. I'm just kind of playing it by feel. Kind of like how that looks. and So we'll let that dry. And then uh, we'll uh, go ahead and seal it with um, clear coat. And we'll put some flock on it. And then we'll apply the um, water effects. Okay we're back and what I've done is I went ahead and did a pour of the Vallejo still water and um, uh, I went ahead and put some static grass tufts on it. Um, I'll kind of explain how that works here later and um, We'll also go ahead and apply some of my flock mix. This is a, this is a mixture of the Woodland Scenics. Uh, I think this is spring and summer flock. And maybe there might even be some GW flocking in there as well. So it's kind of, there's some bright greens. There's some um, uh, browns, some yellows, some oranges. I don't know, maybe there's a couple spider eggs in there too. I don't know. <laughs> it's just, it, this is kind of my, uh, my mix that I did. I've got a couple bags um, of different kinds of flock and I'll just pour some into this little container and I kind of work out of it and then when I get real low I'll make up another mix so but that's kind of what we're we're going to use we're going to use some of this to decorate up this these bases and then um, we're also going to use something uh, this is for, I got this from Army Painter and I'll look to see um, if they still make these and I'm pretty sure they do um, it's, uh, this is, I think this is their vine, poison ivy vine. It makes me itch just thinking about it, but poison ivy, and then they also, um, make the grass tufts that, uh, you saw on this base. I've actually got it on a couple of the other bases as well. Um, I'm going to put some of that down. I've got another one of these in a different color, but I can't seem to find it, so we're just going to make do. So I'll show you how that works. Um, putting that on. And, um, and then we'll apply the Vallejo still water. When I decorated these bases, um, I'm not sure if I've discussed this in my other videos, but basically when I make my ballast, um, it's, it's a mixture of several different kinds of materials. I've got like playground sand in there. I've got some Games Workshop um, ballast, which is kind of chunkier. It's the bigger rocks like that. I've got some aquarium gravel in there. Um, there might even be like a handful of dirt that I threw in. But what I like to do on these, especially on some of the bigger bases, there's a lot of variety in here that I mix in and for the swamp base um, I just I took different colors like um, I'm just using this as an example but um, a ghrelin earth um, Eldar flesh like natural looking colors that co provide contrast so when you look at the base you don't just see a bunch of dry brushing on there. 
I did do some dry brushing, but um, by going back in with a small brush and picking some of these larger stones out, it really adds some depth to the to the base. It gives like you know a whole nother level of realism. Um, if you want to learn about how I did the um, the rocks, how I decorated the core cup, you can look at my custom base, how to make a custom base video. Um, but um, but yeah, just kind of use your imagination. I don't know. I've I, I've never been to an actual swamp before, but you know that's what Google's for, <laughs> and um, you can. Uh, Look at swamps and, and look up swamps and figure out you know how you want to make yours. Um, try to emulate it or mimic it the pictures. But yeah, I'm rambling, getting way too artsy. As always, I will put links down in the description field down below to all the products I'm using. So if you can't find it from your local gaming shop, then you can just order it from there. It's a it's an Amazon link. So. Um, but yeah, we'll get started. I'm going to set this one aside and we're going to go ahead and work on this one, this privateer press um, base. It's got the lip. Um, maybe we'll kind of bounce back and forth between you know, these other GW bases, but we'll start with this one. So what I did here, and if you look at these, when you get these static grass, these flats, that, that you know they use to, to make these and there's do-it-yourself instructional videos out there on how to make these kind of things it requires some equipment or some finagling but uh, I, I think it's unless you know you're one of those people that you really like um, doing things on your own building your own stuff and I do um, I, it's just easier for me to buy a, uh, you know, a strip of these and, and then just use them. Maybe one of these days I'll, I'll do my own, maybe make a video about it, but that's neither here nor there. So what I'll do with these, and they always come in little, little uh, bunches. And some bunches are small and some bunches are big. But um, to get the effect that I want, what I'll do is I take my cutters here and you can see I've, from where I've done it before I've got chunks of this grass on there I'll just kinda slip the bottom of the blade underneath the grass and what they do is they'll put like a dot of glue on there a whole bunch of dots of glue and then they sprinkle the, the, the grass on there and they've got like an electrical charge attached to it you know, and so the charge causes the grass to stand up, and that's why it's so nice and beautiful. But so what I'll do is I'll get my. I make sure I'm in focus here. Let me see if I can zoom in. All right. All right there. So what I do is I get my. If you can kind of see. See how that, that's flat right there. So I'll get my blades on my cutters, and so where I just I'm getting a strip, and I'm just cutting through that grass and that glue. And what it does is it gives me a little strip. If you ever look at at uh, swampy areas there's always a lot of vegetation growing right up against the water because you know life will find a way or in little recesses and nooks and crannies and by cutting that strip I'm getting a more realistic looking piece of grass that's my theory anyway and then what I'll do Zoom back out. And what I'll do is I'll take um, this is uh, just like Zap a Gap. Um, it's a super glue essentially. And then I'm going to take 
guess I'll zoom back in again. And I'm going to put a little bit of that glue right on the end. Right on the bottom of that. Uh, I'm going to tuck it. I think it'll look good right there. Hmm. Where would be good? Let's say. Let's go ahead and put it. Sometimes grass grows on or in the water. So I'm just going to take a tool that's got a sharp edge, something that I can use to push that down. And we're going to just kind of tuck it into its area there. Perfect little spot for it to, to grow. You get something like that. And then you'll let that dry. Typically these glues, uh, let's see, I would give it um, about a, you know, 15, 20 minutes to dry. That's my suggestion anyway. I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between bases so you can kind of see what I've done. So using my cutters, I'm just going to take a piece of this poison ivy and it's just string I'm going to cut a little chunk off maybe we'll cut two chunks and what I want this to do is I'm, I want this to kind of simulate I don't know, some kind of weird vegetation coming out of the the um, water. So I'm going to put a little dot of this super glue right at the water's edge. You can see right there. And I'm going to take my tool and just kind of get it into place. Tuck that in right there. So we got a little bit of viney type vegetation growing right there. So you can put you know whatever mix of vegetation on these that you want um, for the video purposes. I'm not going too crazy, um, but we are still going to put some uh, my. Uh, Block mix on there. So, so what we'll do is I'll get my Elmer's glue, and uh, you can put this on I'll clean my top off so that some actual glue comes out. What I like to do, um, especially when it gets to the fall time and school's getting ready to start up, you can go to Walmart or some of your big box stores. And uh, you can pick up these things for like 99 cents, 50 cents each. And um, I've got a large container of it. And what I'll do is, especially if I'm going through a lot of bases, um, I'll just um, pick up uh, a few containers of this. And, uh, and I'll just refill it as I need it. But it's cheap. So... I'm going to just put a, a dollop of glue up there. That's technical terms for a smidgen. Take my old synthetic brush. Um, maybe put a couple drops of water on it. Just kind of, kind of mix that around. Thin it out a little bit. And I'm 
I'm just going to put some glue down where I want to sprinkle the the flock. Anywhere you think life would try to spring up. I don't know if any of you ever tried to do a garden, but um, man, weeds will grow anywhere. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just take a pinch and sprinkle it on top. Anywhere where I put the glue, and if it gets somewhere else, don't don't sweat it. Just uh, you're gonna knock the edge off here in a minute, and uh, everything will be okay. That makes sense. If not, keep watching. So I'm just pushing the uh, lock into the glue, and then I'll tap the excess off. Blow on it a couple times. A lot more green in that now. Looks a lot more alive. And and the way I do these is I'm it's always a back and forth. Um, I'm kind of bouncing, trying to do all these bases at the same time, so you can get an idea of the different sizes and what. When I'm using a similar technique on all of them, but not one of them will look the same. And if you think about it, nature is kind of that way. It's very chaotic. There's an order behind it, but the result is never the same. What I've done here is you can see where the, the plant life is springing up alongside the water there. And I'll just kind of go along and I'll do each base. My randomness probably doesn't hurt. The ability to get this thing done. Those of you who are paying attention, I'm kind of jumping around from base to base here, but each base kind of gets its own unique individual attention. Now if you're doing RPG type uh, models like uh, for Reaper Bones, that's great because every one of them is going to be different. It's good for army style basing as well because you know each figure is going to have different type of base. I mean that could get pretty tedious if you've got a bajillion skaven like I do, but it'll make for an interesting looking army. That's for sure. So after this dries, we're going to go ahead and uh, hit it with our tester's dull coat um, to seal it in, and uh, then we'll apply the water effects. So that's kind of what we got so far. Okay, we're back, and um, after my glue dried from the flock, I went ahead and sprayed it with tester's dull coat. Of course, you can kind of see it dulled the, uh, the water I'd already poured on there. 
let's go ahead and get started adding the actual water effects. So, still water uh, is made by Vallejo, and um, I've had this bottle for quite some time. Um, I don't do a lot of swamp bases, but anytime I need water, this is kind of my go-to. Um, the recommendations are that you basically do a um, small layers. Uh, it says this product dries um, in 24 hours. You can actually speed that up by hitting it with a hair dryer or setting it outside in the sun. Which is kind of, I think what I'm going to do to get if you're doing multiple layers for miniature bases. Um, this bigger one, that's why I poured a couple of layers ahead of time. Um, I want it to look a little deeper, but um, the smaller ones, at most, you'll use two layers, I would think. Uh, and standard basing, anyway, for your miniatures, maybe one to two layers. Depends on the effect that you want to get. One of the things that I do is a lot of times I'll mount my model up on the cork and out of the water. And that's fine for display purposes. Um, but maybe you just want, uh, just like the swamp hag here, you know, you want her trudging through the water. Uh, so what I'll do is if you've watched my cave troll video, I'll actually, I cut, being very careful, um, I cut underneath the feet. This, this material is fairly soft. Um, and then I'll drill holes and insert little pins there and then drill corresponding holes in the base uh, for her to mount to. Then I'll paint the model up completely and then glue it to the base and then apply the water effect. So, you know, it looks like she's actually, you know, walking through the water. So it's you know, six and one half dozen, yeah, it depends on what you want to do, but um, that's kind of what I would do if you're going to have her walking through the, you know, through the swamp. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, and we'll paint her sometime in a future video tutorial. So, um, what I like to do, or for swamp bases, what we'll do is... Um, this is uh, like a medicine dispenser type cup. I don't know. It's one ounce. I can put a link in the description field down below where I got them. You can get like a bajillion of them for, I don't know, two or three bucks. So what I'll do is I take some uh, green ink because most swampy water it has got a little bit of color to it. And I put maybe two drops of green maybe a drop of brown this is a uh, Vallejo game color ink again by Vallejo and then what I'll do is uh, I'll just uh, pour some of the still water in there and a little more I like the the reason this stuff is I've had this for so long is because I always seal it back up after I'm done with it. If you don't forget, you won't be continually buying new bottles of this because you've forgotten it all dried up. That's just my little tip. And then uh, get yourself an old brush, something you don't mind getting mucked up, and then just mix it up. So you can see it makes kind of a muddy consistency. Supposedly it's water soluble so you can save your brush. Care when pouring this is um, kind of important. What I do for areas that I want to spot place this is I'll get a brush that I can load up fairly decent and I'll just kind of Uh, just put a drop or two here and there and just let it flow right off the brush. One of the things you need to understand is this will flow into every crack and crevice that you place it. Near you where you place it anyway. And um, that's a good thing. 
because it's simulating water but when it dries um, there is some shrinkage for small bases like this the the brush technique is probably the way I would go because you don't need a lot of water to get the effect you need you know that you're wanting just be careful how much you put on there because this thing you know it's it's a liquid so it's gonna settle and go into places you may not want it to so don't overload it and that's what it looks like now so for the bigger one we'll just actually do a pour um, what you can also do for these and I forgot to mention this on the other one is um, you can take some of your flock mix and just put a little bit in there and stir it up and it could be like particulate matter stuff that's you know in the water the algae or something and what I'll do is take my brush and get back into the little sections where I want to make sure it flows to you know, doing some spot placing of the water bigger bases you have the luxury of not really being too careful where you apply it so what I'll do is I'll just kind of make sure I get up into the shoreline here, so to speak. And then the rest will just do a quick pour. Not too much. Again, this stuff, if you've got a level surface, it'll just gradually flow into all the little nooks and crannies. You can take your brush and kind of move it along. Kind of get it into place. Can you see the particulate matter in there? Let's see if I can zoom in a little more. See all the little chunks and particulate matter that, you know, the little pieces of flock that are in there. If you really wanted to muddy it up even more, you could put a bunch more of the uh, flock in there. Set this one aside, let it dry. Again, typically the 24 hour period is what you're looking at for dry time. Um, you can speed that up by using a hair dryer. So if you want to, you can add some more flock to your mix and uh, really swamp that water up. See, it only takes a few drops for this little bitty base. Don't want a ton. When that dries, that'll all shrink up a little bit, but that's not a big deal. We're not looking for perfection. We're just looking for swamp. So we'll let this dry and then I'll show you the final result. So what I did is um, I took these bases after I put the initial coat of uh, still water on. Um, I took it and um, put them on top of this piece of cork. You could put them on a piece of cardboard, something like that. Use some poster tack, this blue stuff, and um, I 
put it outside in the sun and uh, literally about 30 minutes and boom it was it was dry hard to the touch um, it did cause some bubbling but quite frankly I think it kind of looks cool um, I'll let you be the judge very swamp like swampy I will tell you that there there's three coats I'm sorry four coats on this one and there's three coats of still water on each of the smaller ones and that's about how much I needed to put on there in order to take care of all the the shrinkage as this uh, product dries but um, I really like the results and I'll use each one of these in some type of base for either reaper bones or my tyranids moving forward hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you uh, picked up some knowledge and um, I hope this helps you um, build nicer model or uh, nicer bases for your models if uh, you would please leave a comment in the comments field down below what's your next uh, what's the next basing tutorial you'd like to see me do I heard some folks uh, asking me about uh, ocean type bases uh, somebody else recently asked me about a lava type base or a magma you know molten um, base um, we can go with either of those what's your suggestions um, and uh, just let me know what you think about the video comments in the comments field down below and uh, like if you like it and uh, subscribe and share and all that stuff oh uh, we just hit uh, 6,000 subscribers here uh, a couple weeks ago so uh, one of my next videos moving forward I'm gonna do a quick uh, subscriber appreciation comment in the comments field down below and uh, whoever wins that um, subscribers only of course um, will get that uh, Reaper Bones Cthulhu model that I've been promising you guys for a while so uh, yeah thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video peace